that took approximately an hour to get all the things done with those yeah. fill-in songs. So by that time, we're looking at 3.30 or 4 in the morning. Yeah. And by that time, whoever was waiting for us <laughs> had gotten tired of waiting, I'm sure, had gone. Um, but, but Elvis was a good sport about it. He, yeah. he was tired, too. I mean, you could see it in his face. Mm. But he very gamely said, all right, this is what we'll do. Did they always ever, ever talk to you about um, around about the time in his life where you know, certain members of the TCB band were, were walking out wanting more money? Yeah, he, at one point he said, John, you've never asked for a raise. Do you need a raise? I said, no, boss, I don't need nothing. I'm fine. You know, I, you're paying me real well. I'm, I'm doing just great with what you're paying me. He said, well, there's some of the boys uh, are saying that they need raises or they're going to leave, they're going to quit. I, I don't know why, you know. They're probably, they're probably getting paid more than I am, you know, but uh, and if they're getting paid more than I am, they're, they're doing real well. <laughs> uh, but he, he was real worried, you know. He said, why would they want to leave? Uh, they're threatening to leave, but they don't come to me and say, well, Elvis, I need, I need more in my salary, or I, or I can't continue this. I got to find something else. Yeah. So I don't know what to tell you, boss. I really don't know what to tell you. But the word came down that uh, several of them were going to take off if they didn't get more money, and I mean exorbitant raises. Yeah. And he said, "I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it." Uh, one night he told us all, "He said, I'm not going to do it. What you all are getting paid right now is what you're getting paid, and that's how it's going to be." And I think that's plenty. He sure didn't get an argument out of me. <laughs> I, I was happy as a clam, you know. Do you recall the night um, that three guys in Vegas jumped up on stage? Oh, and yeah. There was a bit of a, a fight, a karate fight on stage. Yeah. <laughs> those, guys, those guys were overheard in the line outside the showroom uh, for several hours. They were, well, first of all, they were drunk. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they were talking, they were from an opposing karate school to Ed Parker's uh, school and Ed, as you know Elvis's instructor yeah. and mine and everybody else's I think and they were overheard in the line saying we're gonna get up there and see how far we can stretch Presley I mean they were gonna get on stage and grab him by the arms and see how far they can stretch him or do something to him because they're jealous they're just troublemakers that's mm -hmm. all and um, those three guys at a certain point got up when Elvis was walking over toward the, the left-hand part of the stage, over toward my way. These guys jumped up on the table, these long tables that they had from the front, and trampled everybody's drink and all this, knocked over a couple of people, innocent fans, and jumped up on stage, which was a bad idea. Because in Elvis's eyes, the stage, the stage is sacred ground. Mm. You don't do that. You don't do that. And Red tagged one of the guys. That was their first mistake. <laughs> they, they managed to get Red first. And that hurt. Yeah. You know, Red sent one of them about four rows back. And uh, Sonny got another one. And uh, Dick uh, wrestled another one to the ground. And then the hotel security guards come running through the crowd and arrest them. Mm -hmm. And they were taken off. That was tagged one of the boys. Uh, I saw him get him with a, with a kick. And he apologized to the audience. He said, no extra charge for the, um, for the little <laughs> fireworks over here. He said, I'm real sorry about that. He said, I, but you don't do that. Mm. that. The stage is sacred ground. These people up here with me, uh, we're trying to entertain you. And these guys out here, uh, are they gone? They gone? Good, good. Sorry, folks, I'm real sorry that happened. Sorry you had to see that. Now we'll get back to singing some songs for you. But he was really mad. Yeah. What's, what's the, the best thing, you know, personally, you ever saw Elvis do? Oh, I think uh, one of the most touching things I ever saw him do, there was, a, there was a little girl and her mom that came to every single Vegas show that I can remember. And the little girl was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Her legs were withered from, I, I don't know, polio or something, I don't know. But she couldn't walk. And she loved Elvis. Yeah. So her mom would bring her up to Vegas and, and wheel her in her wheelchair. And the, um, the hotel made sure that they could sit down front. And uh, Elvis was told about this little girl. 
And every night that he'd walk by, this little girl would just burst into tears. Elvis, Elvis. And finally one night when he was passing out scarves, uh, he tried to get a scarf to this little girl and so he snatched it. He said, wait a minute. And he got down off the stage. This is the only second time he ever did this. He got down off the stage and took off a necklace that had a, a crucifix on it. And he took that off his head and put it around this little girl's neck. He said, this is yours. Don't you ever let anybody take it. <laughs> and he kissed her full in the mouth. I said, I love you, darling, and got back on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. The TCB band's um, stage outfits. Uh-huh. Um, who decided what you were going to wear which night? Who was in charge of this? That was Ronnie Tutt, the drummer. Um, he was put in charge because he had he lined up the people to make the stage outfits for us. Mm -hmm. So he made a point of going to Charlie Hodge or Elvis, usually Elvis, say, okay, what... What uniforms, are, what suits are you going to wear for the next five days? And make an Elvis choose. So if Elvis would say, all right, I'm going to wear the, the white with the uh, sundial, okay. Then Ronnie would come to us and say, all right, we, we're going to wear the white with the gold piping. Something that would look kind of like what Elvis had on, yeah. so it would match. Um, Linda Thompson. Oh, what a gal. Uh, I, I mean, I've... I may be wrong here, but I've always got the impression, okay, Elvis was married to Priscilla. Mm -hmm. I know Linda came after Priscilla. Mm -hmm. But I've always had that impression that, you know, it was Linda the one that was... She was so Superb good. for him. Oh, she was wonderful for him. She loved him for him. Mm -hmm. Not because he was Elvis Presley, not because uh, of the money or the diamonds or the cars or the prestige or anything. She loved Elvis for Elvis, the person. Yeah. And she was wonderful for him. Uh, they had a wonderful time together. And we all loved Linda. You know, she was a terrific girl. To this day, still is. Yeah. Married to a real fine fellow now. And, uh, but she has plenty of very positive memories about her time with Elvis. She just couldn't take the pressure of yeah. what he was going through. That's all. Uh, but she loved him. She loved him very deeply. Do you think? Do you think she was the true love for Elvis? As close as he would ever get, I think, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, you know, he, he was with, uh, with Kathy Westmoreland, yeah. and Kathy was very good for him too. Um, but yeah, Linda, I think, was, was really a true love for him. Yeah. I really do think so.